Musical chairs. It was a game we used to play at school on rainy days. Around and around until the music stopped. One kid left standing was out. A chair was removed and the music would start again. The migration of birds is a lot like that, except it's no game. The season's called the tune, and the great journey begins. There are days when you look up, and it's like pepper in the sky. There are so many hawks. You just can't fathom it. Migration allows animals to go to places where they can use food resources that they wouldn't be able to find elsewhere. The only way that they can find the resources they need to reproduce. Different groups of birds use different strategies to migrate. Migration is a phenomenon that fires the imagination of scientist and poet alike. For some species, the great distances that separate their northern and southern lives are accomplished in a series of incredible 2,000-mile non-stop leaps of faith, as many as 12,000 miles in all. And it's taxing. If the food a sandpiper or warbler needs is not available, her migration will end in failure. She may reach her destination too late to nest, or she may never arrive. It's a strategy of survival. This great journey, repeated countless times on an evolutionary scale, washes like so many great waves across our state. New Jersey is so important for the global scheme of migration because it's approximately halfway between the tundra and the tropics. New Jersey is a small state, but it's a state with tremendous environmental diversity. There's not one day in a year that birds aren't using New Jersey's habitats during migration. These species need habitat to survive, and New Jersey is a microcosm of North American habitats. You can go from the ocean to the bay, salt marsh to freshwater marsh, dune forest to overgrown field, swamp forest to cultivated field, upland forest. Every season, every month, you can find something in the bird world to be dazzled by. The hawk migration in the fall throughout the state is spectacular. In 1989 slash 1990, during the winter, we found over 50 bald eagles and five golden eagles. They're attracted to another huge concentration, that of waterfowl. And then move into the springtime, late winter, early spring, when thousands of red-throated loons stage in the mouth of the Delaware Bay. concentration of shorebirds in May on the edge of the Delaware Bay is something that if you haven't seen, you really don't want to miss. Hundreds of thousands of shorebirds drawn up from South America, flying nonstop, deposited on the beaches of Delaware Bay, feeding frantically. For the first two hours after sunrise, warblers are rising out of Higby Beach in waves, three or four thousand in a morning. New Jersey's state bird list exceeds 450 species. Cape May County's list alone is over 405. New Jersey and you, perfect together. And that applies to birds too. They come to New Jersey for many of the same reasons that we came. Our clean water, our beaches, our lakes, our mountains, our forests, our streams. We enjoy them. They depend on them. And so the game continues. It's fun until you lose. The number of birds that migrate in North America each year is declining. For example, in Cape May, we have seen a decline of 30 to 50 percent in the sharp shinned hawks we are seeing over the past decade. This may reflect the decline of songbirds that these birds depend upon for their food. 
I don't think you have to be a scientist to see what's happening to North American birds. The average citizen that walks in the woods or feeds at their feeder come into our sanctuaries on a regular basis and report that they're not seeing the birds they used to see. People should care about the decline that we're seeing of songbirds, hawks, and other species of birds because what it means is that our overall quality of life is declining. You just can't protect the breeding grounds in the north or the wintering grounds in the south, but you have to protect the links, the stopover points, the critical resting and feeding areas if you're going to have global protection of birds. Birds act as bioindicators for problems in the environment. If bird populations are declining, it means there is something wrong and we are obligated to determine why. When we know, then we must resolve the problem. The environmental ills that plague our state are well publicized. By comparison, the destruction of wildlife habitat is a quiet crisis. People don't talk about it, and birds can't. But it is causing bird populations to decline, even disappear at alarming rates. All are threatened by the destruction of habitat. New Jersey's the crossroads of migration, a critical link between breeding grounds in the north and wintering grounds in the south. New Jersey decision makers are also at a crossroad. It's decision time. We set a real killing pace in this century. We got to the crossroads too fast. Technology really isn't going to save us. We've almost outstripped our ability to think and react. And the only thing we can hope is that we haven't outstripped our wisdom. Once open space is gone, it will be lost forever. It's not like some of the other environmental issues that we can correct. We have the opportunity today as individuals, as homeowners, as decision makers, to think globally and act locally. In a state like New Jersey, where growth is still rampant, we really should, in our communities, perhaps take a closer look at what we are planting in our own yards and in our parks and on our school grounds. To ensure that we will have birds left in New Jersey, and indeed the rest of North America, we're going to have to preserve as much habitat as possible. The remaining habitats will support a viable avifauna, However, we have to make sure we get as much of those habitats and manage those habitats so that we can have birds. We have the opportunity to leave a legacy for our children. We have difficult choices to make, but we might well be the last to have this opportunity. When we look closely, we see that our own fate and that of the birds are knit tightly together in the web that is our mutual critical habitat. It's up to us to determine what kind of a world we want. When the game is done and all other living creatures have gone, how will we then feel about claiming our prize, the last chair in an empty room? <laughs>